Okay, so the small intestine also plays a role in nutrient absorption, and that's what this diagram shows. Um, when we talk about the small intestine, there's actually three components. So we have in order the duodenum, we have the jejunum, and then we have the ileum. And then we have a valve called the ileocecal valve that then transports the stuff to your large intestine. So we talked about the duodenum, that's where chemical digestion takes place. And then absorption occurs down the whole length of your small intestine. The small intestine is actually longer than your large intestine and it has a much greater surface area. The reason why it's called small is it has a small diameter. So it's a smaller diameter than the larger diameter of the large intestine. So nutrient absorption is where we had digested everything extracellularly but now everything is small enough that it can diffuse or be actively transported uh, through a cell. So when we talk about nutrient absorption, we need to talk about the incredible surface area that we have in our small intestine. This is not the case for all organisms, but definitely for mammals, because remember we are endotherms, we have to be super efficient. Our digestive system needs to be super efficient. So let's talk about the structure. So we have in our small intestine, we have these little structures, which are called, these are shown right here. Um, these are just folds. If I were to look, at a little piece of this fold, what I would see is, is that I would have this, and then I would have actually folding upon folding. So these finger-like extensions on the folds, these are called villi. Villi are only found in your small intestine. They function to increase the surface area over which nutrients can be absorbed. The villi are composed of a layer of columnar epithelial tissue, just a single layer of column-shaped cells. And so if I were to look at this villi, I would have these column-shaped cells and then these cytoplasmic extensions. And these are called, so this is individual cells, these are called the microvilli. And they even, microvilli, they even make more surface area. Somebody estimated that if you were to take the surface area of our small intestine and unfold it, it would be have the surface area of a tennis court. That's how much surface area we have. This is different in other organisms like earthworms have just one fold. Like they, they're generally their intestine is just round, but it's got this like one fold in it to increase its surface area. But we have so many folds, okay. So when we look at this, we can see this is my villi and each villi has in it capillaries as well as a lacteal. And the reason for that is, is that these nutrients are taken up, it depends upon whether it is water soluble nutrients or whether it is fat soluble nutrients. Okay, so let's look at that nutrient absorption. So water soluble nutrients. What are water soluble nutrients? Like glucose, for example, amino acids. Those are important ones, right? They cross across the membrane and they are picked up by capillaries. They are then, the capillaries coalesce into larger blood vessels, right? And they're transported to the liver. So the nutrient rich blood from your intestine, the nutrient rich 
blood is transported to the liver. Why would it be transported to the liver? That is because the liver detoxifies stuff. So what if you absorbed some toxins? What if uh, you absorbed so much glucose that you would like, if it went to your brain, you would go into a coma? So the liver is what actually, um, it helps to modify the nutrients that we absorb. And so we'll talk more about that when we get to the function of the liver, but that's a function of the liver. The fat soluble nutrients, have to be packaged. Anything that is traveling in our body and it's a fat soluble, we, do want, we want it to be packaged in proteins. And we don't really want all of the fats that we absorb to go right into the circulatory system. So it is actually picked up by a different system, the lymphatic system, by the lacteals that are in the vill villi. Okay, so this would be lipids. Okay. These actually diffuse right across the cell surface. Okay. So they're packaged in a protein coat. And that helps to make them a little bit more water soluble. And they are called chylomicrons. I'm not sure what that word comes from, but they're small packages of lipids. And then these are picked up by the lacteals. They are transported via the lymphatic system. They do not go to the liver, but they, in the lymphatic system, it gets diluted and it travels up and it re-enters venous circulation, your veins, up near your neck region in your jugular. So eventually will go into circulation, but not until it's like diluted by the rest of the fluid in your lymphatic system. So we'll talk about the lymphatic system more when we get to the circulatory system. So let's look at this diagram. These are the capillaries. This is the lacteal. The green, the lymphatic system is always green for some reason, it's not really, but this is what is picking up the fat soluble nutrients. This is the capillaries that are picking up the water soluble nutrients.